got in the mail today. Let's see, you could already win a million dollars. Pass due. Final notice. We are coming to kill you, aka the mafia. And junk out. I wonder what's in this box. Hey, Booby, I heard your one-year anniversary for filet mignon or whatever on the YouTubes is coming up. So I bought you a couple of nice things for the occasion. Now, I know you're still a little mixed up and watch that My Pretty Pony show. I personally think it's weird, but my friend Gertrude says that weirdness means you're creative. When are you going to settle down, anyway? You're such a bright boy with a college job. You need a... Whatever, Agnes. Anywho, let's see what you sent. Ooh! She gave me a rose luck pearl. She, she finally realized that that's the best pony for me. Well, good on her. What was else in here? Huh. The world's biggest tea party. It looks a little Generation 3, but... It can't be all that bad. Let's give this thing a watch. After experiencing this movie, for lack of a better term, my doctor, Vinny Boombots, gave me this prescription for placebo uh, because of all the trauma that this thing uh, gave me. And so, hopefully with this little wonderful drug placebo, thank you so much, Vinny, that I will be able to go on with this review. And I'm... I'm gonna just give you a warning up front. This was kind of rough. No other words for it. <laughs> this is rough. This is oh, shit. <sighs> so before I get this review underway, I just have one statement to make. My Little Pony, the world's biggest tea party, is the end result of all our collective sins against God and nature, and is synthesized and dispersed to us as a visual cancer. So everything in this production, I guess you could call it, uh, is so awful, so creatively just garbage, that I am still in shock and awe that anybody looked at this and said, hey, let's revive it. I thought this was the death knell and the barn fire it died in that would kill ponies off forever. But it didn't. So right off the bat, we were introduced to three ladybugs who were giggling and holding a book. We don't know why they're holding the book. We don't know why they're giggling that they're holding the book. We have no clue about what their motivation is right off the bat. And just like the five-year-old sitting in the audience wondering where the fuck the ponies are, I'm confused and lost. Congratulations, Hasbro. You did it in 10 seconds. World record time. Dingo's already jealous of your ass. So after watching these three ladybugs, because you know they're wearing a skirt, so they're clearly ladies, uh, makes me wonder, um, who in the figment of flying fuck are you? Really? What the fuck, man? God damn it already. As I was saying, I am Kenbro Gilspotten Geatspike, but you may call me Spike. Dude, 
you are not Spike, and I will contest that until the day that I die. If anything, you look like something Magellan from Eureka's Castle shit out after a three-day cocaine and Chuck E. Cheese bender. I was looking for my how-to book. Perhaps you've seen it. You can't miss it. It's quite large, bright purple with sparkly orange juice. Holy cow, this child is in clear denial that this thing on stage is a total shit show. Oh, how I pine for the days when I was that naive and hopeful. Are you ready to have a jolly good time? Ah! I said, are you ready to have a jolly good time? Okay, now sing with me. My little pony, my little pony. At that moment, this little girl just realized everything her parents told her was a lie. The Tooth Fairy isn't real, Santa Claus does not exist, and this purple skin fuckstick is a poorly paid dancer in a dragon costume. Guess what, Carrie? Everything goes downhill from here. Welcome to despair, cynicism, and crushed souls. We call it life. Take a seat. Right this way to Ponyville. Couldn't you find a cleaner face kid than this? Holy shit, she looks worse than Al Pacino at the end of Scarface, except she's overdosing on pixie sticks. Quit trying to convince your kid that they're having a good time. She may be three years old, but she can already sense massive amounts of bullshit from a mile away. Good morning, I'm Sweetberry. Good morning, everyone. What in the name of our Lord and Savior Flying Spaghetti Monster are these things on stage? They can't possibly be the ponies, right? Right? Oh, shit. God damn it. My little pony, here with you, the fun never ends. Mommy, I pissed my pants in sheer terror. Holy shit, a brony! Inject that boy with a million cc's of football guns and keg stands before he loses all his masculinity at age seven. Welcome to my sweet shop, where every day I make tons of yummy cookies and cakes for everyone in Ponyville. Oh, Kathleen Barr, why? You could have said no. I wouldn't have blamed you. Hasbro wouldn't have blamed you. Oh, you know what this means, right? Now you gotta go up into my newly minted voice actor's hall of shame. Oh, welcome to being inducted as the first member. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's going to be new people coming in on a regular basis. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> she is funny. Skies are sunny. Whenever we're together. Fun little fact for you. A week after this show, that little girl right there went gothic. That's how damning this show is. Who passes by? Wait, you mean Rarity, right? She's the fashion pony, not this so-and-so twit character I've never heard of. Right? Like you to meet Rainbow Dash! Ah, oh, finally, a pony I know and like. you have Rarity and Pinkie Pie. Those are two ponies that I'm at least familiar with, and I need some pony that I could recognize throughout this train wreck of a production. Because so far, this is turning out worse than season three of 1987 Transformers. Yeah, it's that bad. Hello, everyone. One, two, 
three. Hi there. I'm Rarity. No, 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 This is not Rarity. I don't even like Rarity that much. This is not Rarity. This lovely thing is nothing more than a pile of rainbow vomit and pink custard semen made to walk and talk and have a pointy dildo on its head. Get thee behind me, Satan! Get thee behind me! Oh, there are just so many ways to have fun. It's hard to decide what to do first. How about walking out of the show? That's a good first step. Uh -oh. Oh, gosh. oh, shit. Some pony raided the cider supply hardcore. When I let my mind wander, I come up with all sorts of ways to spend my day having fun. Last week I said a honey badger hopped up on angel dust loose in Rainbow Dash's bedroom. It was totes bitchin'. Than any unicorn has ever jumped. <laughs> oh, I yearn for the sweet release of death. <laughs> Good morning, Trellala. How are you? And how are you, Tiddlywing? Great. Nice to see ya. Gee, what do you want to do today, Tiddlywing? I don't know, Trellala. Do you have any fun ideas, Zipsy? Ooh, ooh. I know how to have fun. Let's commit arson and vandalize Rarity's place. Then sodomize Spike with a car battery. And then push Granny Smith down a staircase. And then we'll have a light lunch. Hasbro, I have some questions right now. You're a multi-billion dollar company. And you've done some things like buy Milton Bradley and Parker Brothers. And now I'm kind of lost here. Because these breezies, even though I don't like them and they're shoved in my face, look really cheap. It's like you just took a bunch of old plushies that were rotting in a warehouse somewhere, shoved a stick up their ass, and said, Good! And now you're throwing it in front of children. I mean, seriously, if these things were, like, any well lit, they would see the true horror in them. And then they would be disturbed for life. Just saying, dude. Do you call her out, Tiddlywink? Oh, no, no, no. I think Trella La should call her. <laughs> no, no. I insist. Zipsy, you should call it. Just do it! Good morning, Pinkie Pie. Oh, good morning, my little breezy friends. And good morning, everyone. Well, this is Fifty Shades of Wrong. What color pink is she, Pepto-Bismol? Last night I had the most wonderful dream. Do you ever have dreams? Yeah. Yeah. I had a dream, too. I dreamt I didn't have to do this damn review. <sighs> well, in my dream, everything was absolutely and definitely pink. All right, that is called a medical condition, and you need to get it checked out. It's in my step. It's in my smile. All day long, I'm positively pink. So, uh, usually by this point in the review, I've talked about some of the plot elements, like what's transpired, and I'm 12 minutes into this train wreck of a dumpster fire in the middle of a clown orgy, and all I've got are names. Seriously. This feels like fucking purgatory. We're the ladybugs, we're the ladybugs, here's our ladybug song. Oh, come on, that's not a song. That's the end result of crushed dreams and a mountain of student loan debt. Hey, that's sexual harassment and Spike doesn't have to take it. <laughs> sure, yeah, I want to help. I always want to help. How can I help? Oh, shit. The horse tranks kicked in. Maybe we can find something we can all do. Ooh, like what? Ooh, ooh, here's my list of suggestions. If we don't think small, we can do it all. You think so? Yeah. Everything that's on the list, make sure that not a one is missed. It's sounding like a lot, but after all. All right, so let's address the huge ass horse in the room the costumes and I've done my best not to say anything about the shit up to now because I don't want this whole damn review to be nothing but making fun of the fucking costumes but what the fuck is going on here seriously 
the hind legs that don't move, that just sort of dangle like snot out of a five-year-old's nose. The goddamn manes and tails that look like recycled pom-poms from Party City after, you know, whatever the fuck clearance cell they have. And then the fucking eyes. The eyes. Holy cow, that stare into your souls and expose you of all your darkest secrets that the world should never know. And then while you're traumatized by that, their mouths will devour you starting feet first so you can stare deeper into their eyes as they devour you whole. We have to think of a really big idea. Big. Really big. Holy mother of Lucifer's taint. They had to lobotomize that child so he would be excited to see this musical of misery and self-loathing. Giant. Enormous. Ginormous. I beg your pardon, Pinkie Pie. You haven't seen my how-to book, have you? No, Spike, but it sure would come in handy right about now. Oh, look, non-plot A and non-plot B are crossing the streams, resulting in Jack Squat! We can come up with something, right? Hmm. I know, a squink! I'll think of the pinky squink! A squink? What is a squink? Well, I'll show you. Don't you fucking dare, Pinkie Pie. There are children in this audience. Think the answer comes, then open up your eyes. Squeeze <gasps> Perhaps we could get our friends here. Oh, for Princess Moonbutt's sake. Why are the ladybug demons terrorizing the children now? Let's get our squinkers going. Squeeze your eyes shut really tight. And then think with all your might. Herpes. A big idea of how we can do it all. Guess what it is? Uh, time's up. Bitch, you didn't even give him a chance. Sweet. It sounds like a Ponyville tea party to me, doesn't it? But not just an everyday Ponyville tea party. Yes, let's sing a song about every little thing we do. I know this is a musical, but Jesus jumped up Christ. Can you develop the plot more than fucking singing about it? got a crazy idea about this whole world's biggest tea party thing. Here, hear me out. How about this? How about you quit singing about shit and do shit? There you go. Problem solved. Hot damn. More pills. Oh my god, I... I think I might have just squinked. I did. Wait, uh, what place? Uh, where are we gonna have the world's biggest tea party anyway? How about Detroit? They need something to liven their town up. I mean, the Robocop statue is cool and all, but you need something more than that. I just knew this was going to be a positively pink kind of day. <laughs> oh God, I can't. I can't take all this pink alliteration. It's gonna make me sicker. Stop! Stop! Ooh, we've got to have some cookies. The cookies I will bake. For something extra special, I'll even make a cake. Yum, 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 yummy, yum, yum, yummy. Those aren't lyrics, assholes! Uh, recap what's transpired so far in this production you have a place where ponies who live amongst rainbows and marshmallows and lollipops and beautiful dreams are bored out of their skull okay one of them says hey let's throw the world's biggest tea party because it'll be fun not only that let's do it before sundown okay 
but let's do it someplace else. Not like across the street or a neighbor's house. Fuck it, another fucking zip code. What kind of crazy illogical logistical bullshit is this? Why in the fuck am I arguing it? Oh, I could think of some other kettles I would rather be drinking from. Pass. Why are the bugs and the buttfuck dragons still looking for the book? I know they have it. The audience knows they have it. Are they just massive trolls? How is this a plot line? I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my stuff. I want that fucking shirt! Everyone! What a splendid idea, darling. By God, they remember the stepchildren in the back row. Good for you. It doesn't matter anyway, since we sort of don't have any stamps. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. So Minty returns with about five grand worth of stamps slapped on her ass, and this results in a change of plans. Because <laughs> why the fuck not? Okay, I think I need to explain the RSVP system to you ponies because you're doing it wrong. Just a little piece of advice here. Um, yeah, you're fucking up the whole system, you ignorant buffoons. I mean, there's a reason why we have head counts. It's so you know how much food to get. And so you don't go over budget or have way too much shit left over. It's so your budget doesn't get shafted, you fuck nuts. Why do the ladybugs still have the book? Do they get some sort of sick pleasure torturing Spike? I mean, I understand why they might, but what is the relevance here? Help! To wave your hand if you want to go to a tea party. Now, wave both your hands if you want to go to the world's biggest tea party! <laughs> Fabulous! As you like this. <laughs> That's your pinky finger, you know. Next. Bring your teacup to your lips and take a slight sip. Ah, just what every five-year-old wanted to do today. Learn how to sip tea. Hot damn, this is so much fun and educational. I pissed my pants. Twice. Teacup to your lips and take a sip. How desperate are you two poor souls in need of entertainment? You would stoop this low. China, by the way, is also what we call the cup. And when you lift it to your lips, remember pinkies up! China, by the way, is also what we call the cup. And when you lift it to your lips, remember pinkies up! Nope. I refuse on principle to listen to a song about tea. Just you ladies should go. <laughs> we we do do. I'll continue searching for my how-to book. I'm beginning to think it's hiding from me. <laughs> Why is the book plot still a fucking thing?! Really? The fuck, man? It's a goddamn book! And they're hanging around each other! And they're fucking... Just... With the shit! And... They know it! He need... They know he needs it! But they don't give it... What the fuck, man?! Ah, oh, damn it! Dazzle you? Mmm, that's a tall order. What if you try a new color? A new color? Come on, it'll be fun. Really, darling? Yeah! <laughs> Try a new color on... Oh my god, you're not even trying at this point, are you? 30 seconds ago, we just had a song about fucking tea. And now I'm getting a song about new colors. Were the writers just creatively bankrupt for this pile of shit and said fine? Kids will eat this shit up! They ain't got no fucking taste! No fucking standards! Fuck it! Put those goddamn streamers on the fucking top of the horse and that dildo on the unicorn! It'll be fucking brilliant! God damn it! 
Huh. I didn't know they were having a Jesse Ventura look-alike contest for the tea party. Well, that's pretty cool. Exactly what I am is fine. I'm every bit of just divine, darling. That resolved nothing. Thanks. Razzle dazzle, who could it be? Wait, what the fuck is this? What is Spike doing? Now to the disco drums. Mm. Unicornia, here she comes. I love it. Um, excuse me for just a moment. Call you back. Maybe. Of all the shitty music you could have resurrected from mediocrity's rotting, bloated corpse, you chose Disco Duck by Rick Dees and then made a parody of it. And on top of that, you decide, hey, let's get urban by making Spike look hip hop. Because yes, when I think thug life, I think of a purple fuck dragon with a giant ass necklace. Holy shit creativity. Ooh, I'm down with this! <laughs> All you ponies gather round! I put a hip hop beat to a disco sound! It's a brand new way to start your sound! You know what? I think my home world needs me. I shall return to my people. So long, everybody. <laughs> Those really fun shiny streamers yet? Um, see, well, I'm not really completely finished finished yet. Rarity, have you even started started making those really fun shiny streamers yet? Holy shit drama! Streamergate 2017! My book is in the basket, do you? Fuck. The. Book. Plot. It's time to pack your streamers into the balloon! Uh, streamers? Oh yeah, my streamers. Well, see, where are they, Rarity? Well, I always plan to be purely perfect. The streamers, Rarity. Yes or no? Quit dancing around the subject like a third grader who forgot their book report and just give us a goddamn response. I promise that I will give it a try because I think that I... Oh shit, the cocaine kicked in. Darlings, look how high in the sky it's going. Do you all see the balloon? My friend. I must obey my pony gods. I must cleanse the streets with the blood of heretics. Amazing. Holy shit, this is so amazing! I just just fairy dust and crap rainbows! If this gets any more awesome, my heart's gonna jump out of my chest and beat me in the head with a fungo bat! Sorry, I'm not interested in the castle song. I'd rather lick 9 volt batteries all day. Could you put some vodka in mine? Minty, minty, minty. Oh, not minty. <gasps> I forgot. <gasps> no, not pinky. You mean after an hour of nothing, we might have conflict, drama, suspense? Was it me this time? No, it wasn't you, Minty. It was me. I forgot the tea. I can't believe I forgot the tea and teapot.
Well, guess who is going to the glue factory now? Oh, just fuck already! A friend who knows just how I feel. God damn it, I was just joking, you sick fucks! I need to squeak big! Squink, 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 squeeze and think. Mommy, I wanna go home! Shut up, you little brat, and watch the pony pop a squat or whatever. These tickets were 30 bucks a piece, and I hate wasting money. Purple with sparkly orange jewels all over it, and it says, How to write on the cover. <laughs> my book, my book, my glorious how to book. Oh. What the fuck? These ladybugs have been keeping the book away from Spike the entire time, and nothing is going to be done about it? I mean, holy shit, at least get. Pissed or something? Emote, goddammit! When your party has no tea, say and do this rhyme with me. Smile as you raise your cup, and don't forget, say Pinky's up! So apparently repeating the phrase bibbity bobbity bullshit fixes everything. Well, I learned a thing. Celestia's 13th, those ponies are magical! Burn their asses with the fires of a thousand scored husbandos! Now we can have our tea party after all! Everyone stand up and sing the teapot song with us! No. This... I don't have words anymore. I can't scream enough of how shit this production is. What kind of maniac makes this kind of cynical fucking money grab? There's just no other words to describe this shit. God damn it, I need more... No. No. I'm not going to let placebo control my life. Okay. I think I finally understand this whole process. It's taken me so long just ranting and screaming that I think I finally understand it. Now hear me out. Thank God this exists. I know that sounds crazy, and maybe it's the placebo in my body just coursing through my veins saying this, but I'm thankful that the world's biggest tea party exists. I do. Because if it didn't, would friendship is magic exist? Look, Generation 3 was in the creative doldrums. Hasbro couldn't figure out what to do with this franchise, and they even made worse material after this production. If anything, this helped the creative people like Lauren Faust, M.A. Larson, Jason Thiessen, and the rest of the artists resurrect the ponies because they could only go up from here. When I was a little boy, I watched My Little Pony, the first generation, because back then we only had four channels, and I was starved for any cartoon I could get. So, naturally, I got laughed at for that. But I really didn't care because those ponies were in a fantasy land and fought monsters. And I still thought that was cool. And now you see it today in its latest iteration. And they still do that. And there are character development and story arcs. And it's really refreshing. But then there was this 20 plus year span where none of that really existed and this 
really gets to me because, I mean, part of the issue that I see with a lot of this stems from the fact that it's tailored towards little girls, or this series is tailored towards little boys. And my thought process has always been, you don't tailor it towards a specific demographic. If you make a good story with interesting characters and a compelling plot, people will follow it, regardless of who they are. Star Wars is the same way. It flips a lot of that script, and people love the shit out of it. And the same thing is now happened to My Little Pony so much that a whole fandom has erupted that has blown the doors wide open. And to me, if you're an artist or a writer, cartoonist, what have you, and you have that ability to make something for television or for any medium where people would be able to see it, those are the things that you concentrate on. Story, character, development, arcs, and it will be followed. Fans will find it. Don't write something to pander, because I'm going to tell you something. Children are way smarter than you will ever give them credit for. Now, I made a joke that they can smell bullshit a mile away. They can. And you can even watch in this production, these kids are not fucking amused. Sure, we made fun of it, but they actually knew it was up. Some of them were rightly pissed, and I don't blame them. As far as I'm concerned, this is part of the catalyst to resurrecting the ponies, because the new writer said never again. Thank you, World's Biggest Tea Party, for helping us see that. Now as for newborn cuties, fuck them! I'd rather watch Ricky Skull fuck Skulu's newborn corpse than watch 30 seconds of Over Two Rainbows. Oh, by the way, happy anniversary to me and fuck you too! Here <laughs>